So we get him back on his feet and uh, they did the surgery and the last 11 years have been just swimmingly well. It's, so this, that's probably, uh, that's two years ago. Last March, March 18th, Monday, I'm sitting in a conference room preparing with my team for a meeting. I get a phone call. And uh, Connor felt like a ton of bricks. My wife said, we're in the ambulance, we're going to the hospital. We didn't know whether it was a stroke or whether it was a seizure. But all I know is it wasn't good. And it was an amazing time. So we get him to the hospital, we get him stabilized. About midnight, I said, you know, your insurance isn't any good in this hospital, we're gonna move you. Because at midnight, they move him to a small hospital in downtown LA, it used to be called French Hospital. And at there, it was amazing because it was so small, we actually got some great attention. Tuesday was very ugly, and Wednesday is even worse. Paralyzed on the right side, not speaking, it was pretty dire. I'm going to share with you a couple of videos because I can't give it the power that it, uh, that this really deserves because I witnessed a miracle. I haven't written a testimony yet for this young man, but his name was Mark Chu. And Mark um, was a physical therapist and he came into the room. Um, he came into the room on the Wednesday, I said, I'm here to physical therapy. It was so grim and dark, I didn't know what, I don't know what, I didn't know what to think, I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to do, and um, I downloaded these things somewhere here. And he touched him for about half an hour, and um, he said, you know, you're gonna, he just pulled the guy, he's acupuncture, Eastern medicine, needs Western, Western medicine. And like, he goes, you'll notice a big difference tomorrow. I'll be back. So I spent the night in the hospital. Six o'clock in the morning, the uh, Connor's up. Good morning, Dad. Clear as crystal. I couldn't believe it. And I said, hey, can you, can you move your knee? Or, you know, his left side's all good. He moves his arms. I said, no, can you move your right arm? Couldn't move his right arm. Couldn't Barely moved his right foot up a little bit. Wow, so the guy comes back in the room on Thursday and all right. Got him out of bed and uh, got him sat down and grabbed him by the leg again and stood there for about 45 minutes with him. I'm fumbling here, I'm trying to find where I save all these videos. <coughs> um, bear with me, I'll get this. Because these things speak volumes for I call the first one the uh, power of a strong heart and he's um, that big heart pull him out <laughs> give me a second I'm going Parker, tell one of your jokes. They're all horrible, but tell one in there. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those southern jokes. Oh, my goodness. I got one. A kid goes to his mother. He's six years old. He says, Mom, he says, where'd I come from? She just came from God. So that night, the old man's home. And he's had about six beers. And he said, Daddy, where'd I come from? Well, started the apes. Evolution went from there. The kid goes back to mommy. He says, Mommy. Daddy told me I came to the eighth. You saw that's his side of the family. <laughs> <laughs> so this is this is the power of prayer. So I uh, we are uh, we're in shock, obviously, with this whole stroke thing, and I'm trying to figure out how to get them better. I decided to take some photos and videos to, to kind of share with people and send out and I, I know I, sent, I reached a few of you guys in the room, but I kid you not, we probably had 3,000 people at least praying. And uh, 
When you talk about personal space, um, and you can get close to someone that you can feel the energy from, when you got 3,000 people praying, probably plus, 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 because we're in prayer chains and all that, and I thought, you know, yeah, whatever. But uh, trust me, I, I, what I witnessed here, this was just absolutely uh, amazing. And so, so he he starts walking, and he is. This is the next day. This is this is on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Friday he's walking all around the hospital. <laughs> you gotta get balance back. You gotta get speech back. Still a little problems with the hand and being a little flaccid in his hand, uh, but we just kept working at it. We kept working and. Uh, we, this is on Sun. this is actually Sunday, <laughs> having a ball, throwing a ball, and uh, so we had, had this Chinese, very stoic Chinese woman, uh, neurologist, and I shot this video, and uh, she was just amazing, she says, you know, I've been a doctor for 40 years, and she says, I've never seen uh, the bounce back that he's had. It's just there's nothing <coughs> further I can do. So this is also on Sunday. He's walking the stairs. So just the just the strength is just amazing. So we sent she sent him home a week later. A stroke on Monday the 18th, and he was home the following Monday. Um, and uh, it's just testimony to his strength. And uh, sometimes when you when you're down, it's a kid, you don't. You don't know any better. You know, you can't communicate that he's got tingling in his arms or he's feeling funny or what have you. And his world, his life goes on. And that's, uh, I've been just grabbing all those wonderful things that he's been doing and, and trying to embrace them. Unfortunately, over the summer, I, uh, I was starting to have some problems. Uh, I, uh, I had chronic headaches. I was uh, having pain over my eyes. I was um, just really struggling, very honest, just struggling. It wasn't until uh, after MRIs and some, some C, uh, CAT scans and all that good stuff that um, that I actually went and um, saw this neurologist, and she said, um, she said "You got to stop worrying." I'm worrying. You know, that's, our, our life is so stressful, and real estate brokers and. No, 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 I'm not talking about stress. I'm just talking about worry. You worry about the dumbest things. <laughs> so um, it was really weird. Like a couple days after that, I really went and saw a chiropractor and kind of got my life back in balance a little bit. I was feeling pretty good. And you remember a couple conferences ago, a guy talking about catching monkeys? Does anybody remember that story? You don't know? All right, so I'll share that, this, this quick story with you because catching monkeys is, uh, is all about... Uh, so, so we used to shoot monkeys out of the trees and they would come back injured. So they went to the old way and that is they cut out a gourd, cut the top off the gourd, take some fruit, and put it in this thing, wrap some vines around it, just a hole about, you know, that big. By the time you put it down in front of the monkey in the tree, you turn around and walk away, the monkey's out of the tree and he puts his hand in this jar and they're just trying to pull the fruit out and they build themselves into such a frenzy and a panic they pass out. And then they go over and bag the monkey and that's how you catch a monkey. The moral of that story is just letting go. And uh, so in September, October, when we were in Chicago, kind of figured out I'm going to let go. And uh, it's been one of the greatest things uh, that I've done in trusting God a little bit more and having some, really increasing my faith. I didn't think I was up fit. You know, I thought I was always a pretty faithful guy. But um, letting go and doing the right things and, making decisions of putting this prayer group together and help, helping my good Christian men in Pasadena and helping the homeless. We all don't have time for that stuff. We're busier than hell, running around trying to close deals. I was like, you know what? It doesn't matter anymore. It's not about making an almighty dollar. It's about doing some good. And seeing you all here in this room makes me feel good. And some of you guys have never been to these prayer breakfasts before. And, and uh, I, you know, like Aaron and I was a convert that stumbled upon it after a late night of drinking and rolling out, trying to 
work out my uh, alcohol uh, system and go up in the room and be like, wow, this is, this is, this is really cool. So I want to thank you for, for listening to my story. Um, hopefully it's moving. Hopefully it inspires you all to, to go out and help somebody out there in the community that needs to be helped uplift because we all have our health. And very honestly, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And if you're not cognizant of good health, check again, check your pulse because you guys are all in good health and you're, you're in a good spot. I'm a lucky man. And I'm very lucky to be a part of SAOR and have good friends like Patrick, John, Aaron, and all of you guys. The, the support right here. Some of you guys roll in the room. Carrot Tops Point, just down the street. And Jim said, I want to see you, Scott. So thank you very much for listening to my uh, story. And again, hopefully we, you all can be moved. This is from Sunday, um, backyard, guys a little grin. <laughs>